you guys are making it too easy again because I can't believe you guys aren't seeing that there's no way that the Chiefs win this. The Bengals what? are going to win this game. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Dorm Debate Podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, your Thanksgiving and all the Thanksgiving slated NFL games. Uh, we took a little bit of a hiatus just to spend time with family and not worry about content. Uh, we all enjoyed it. I know that uh, the Giants did lose. I saw that, John, unfortunately. Yeah, right. it's I was expecting it's a loss, to be honest. <laughs> but as we're going to bounce back. We'll bounce back. Okay. The season as a whole, you're pretty thankful for you know oh, yeah. Dayball and what he's done for sure. Okay, thankful yeah. for the schedule. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what? How easy the schedule yeah. has been? <laughs> I think every NFC East fan will be uh, happy about that. Our division is yeah, so good. It's as Jonathan so would good. say, the, the Eagles have had a very easy schedule. All and right. Speaking of, but Jonathan, he doesn't he doesn't realize that the Cowboys play the exact same team. <laughs> Well, no, but it's more impressive when the Cowboys. Yeah, yeah. no, of course. Where, where is Jonathan today, Jared? Why don't you update? The Jonathan uh, could not make it. He actually went to uh, Ghana for Thanksgiving. That's where he's from. He wasn't born there, but his family is from there. So he spent some time over there, and he's actually in transit right now, getting back. Uh, so he couldn't be on the podcast, um, but I'm sure he wanted to be because one of our topics today is about the Cowboys, and we all know that he's the most diehard, uh, vocal, abrasive Cowboys fan that we know. And it would be really fun to have him uh, chime <laughs> in on this, but maybe it'll be good. We'll kind of get each of our thoughts in without having to uh, <laughs> argue with, <laughs> with Jonathan. So we'll see. Um, and then obviously I uh, the lock and upset at the end of the podcast, we're going to shift to next week. So we'll continue that. Um but this week we will just do predictions on the two best games this week, which are the Dolphins at 49ers and the Chiefs at Bengals. So a lot of great games going on. We'll predict those two, and we have a full slate of our topics today. Before we get into that, I do want to say a quick shout-out to my Michigan Wolverines. They beat Ohio State in Ohio for the first time since 2000, and they won back-to-back games against Ohio State uh, back in 1999 and 2000. Haven't done it since until Saturday. So, Wait, so shout out to the Michigan Wolverines. Congrats to Michigan. But, okay, in 1999, they beat Ohio State, right? And yeah. then in 2000, they beat Ohio State. Yeah. Now, what was – did they win the national championship in 2000? No, they won it in 1997. So hmm. you, Well, you don't uh, think they're going to win it now? I don't know. That's not You can't let Jared good omens. <laughs> For those listening, I'm, Jared is decked out at all Michigan. You got the Michigan M behind you as well, next to the Chargers. Oh yeah, we look, we decked good. it out. I, like I, it. I had to make sure this is this only comes once every twenty two <laughs> years, so I guess I really got to take advantage of it. <laughs> yeah, as say, um, what, what does this mean? I mean, a little deviation from NFL. What does this mean to you as a, as a college football? Say someone doesn't know college football. What does this mean? This would be like. Um, Hmm, that's a good question. It's almost like the Lions making the playoffs. You know, like it is just a regular season game. Huh. We don't get a trophy, we don't get a championship. And same with the Lions. They may make the playoffs on a wild card or whatever. They don't get anything, they don't get shirts or whatever. But the feeling of beating your rival or yeah. making the playoffs after such a long drought, it almost felt foreign to me because I saw us celebrating. And it looked like I was in an alternate universe <laughs> where you're seeing Michigan happy and waving the Michigan flag <laughs> in Ohio in that stadium. And that is something that I've never seen in my entire life. So it's almost like you're like almost as similar as when you went to the moon and and, and, <laughs> and they you, you look up at the moon and you're like, no one could go up there. There's no way no one could go up there. Oh, and then they the do Soviets. it. <laughs> well, you, yeah, you you watch it on TV and you're like, wow, they're up there. And then people are like, no, nah, it's got to be fake. Okay. And that was me. I was just completely in denial wow. about this happening. I just could not fathom 
I, a is... Michigan win in Ohio. It just could not compute in my head. So that's how it felt. It was just very yeah. confusing, and it's still <laughs> taking me a while to understand that we did it. Um, I have to watch a lot of highlights every night um, to <laughs> so really sure let it happen. set in. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Learning a lot about so, it. But it's, it's been crazy, but the job's not done. Mm-hmm. Job's not finished, as Kobe would say. Job finished? Uh, job not finished. Job not, <laughs> job not finished. So we got the Big Ten Championship this week, and then we got the playoffs um, at the end of the month and New Year's. So we got a long road ahead, but very happy uh, that we went undefeated and beat Ohio State and Michigan State and Penn State. All yeah. our rivals are beaten. It's a great day to be a Michigan Wolverine. I'm glad. So, as I deviate off of Michigan, let's move on to NFL because that's what we're all here for. Everyone probably clicked off because they <laughs> heard me rant about that. Our engagement's <laughs> gone. The game we're playing today is are you jumping on the bandwagon? Now, I'm going to list four teams that have been on the hot streak lately. Probably one of the hottest teams um, of the NFL. There's there's four. Dolphins, Cowboys, Vikings, and 49ers. All have won four of their last five. And I'm going to ask these guys, are you going to jump on the bandwagon? After all these wins, are you finally going full force and saying, yep, I picked them to make the playoffs. I picked them to win the division, and so on and so forth. So the first one is about the Miami Dolphins. And it's about them winning the AFC East. So are you jumping on the bandwagon on the Miami Dolphins winning the AFC East? Let's go over the schedule. I mean, the uh, standings. We have the Dolphins at 8-3. The Bills also at 8-3, but the Dolphins hold the tiebreaker. Um, And then the Jets at 7-4, and and the Patriots at 6-5. So a very close division, probably one of the best divisions in the NFL next to the NFC East. Um, But... I want to get your guys' thoughts. First, we'll just go around, just say yes or no. Do you think that you're jumping on the bandwagon for the uh, Dolphins winning the division? And then we'll we'll discuss. I I say no. I think they will not win the division, so I am going to stay off. I'm not jumping on the bandwagon. John? Yeah, I'm off the bandwagon, too. I don't think they're going to win the division. I still like the, the Dolphins, um, but I do not think they're going to win the AFC East. Uh I, I see the bandwagon and I'm I'm gonna take a leap my uh, on it. Uh, I'm saying I'm picking the Dolphins for for winning the AFC East. If that's the if that's the frame of the conversation, that's where I'm gonna go. And I, and I you know I think I can't speak for Jonathan, but I I can't imagine him speaking well of the Bills. So he might agree with me. We'll have to see. Yeah, but... we could probably call out what he would say. He'd <laughs> oh, probably yeah. say. For sure. Oh, I've been on the bandwagon. Yeah. I've been on it. <laughs> come on. Come along. I'm already on it. I'm driving this train. Like, let's go. Um, I mean, he's been, he's, he's called it. I mean, he even called it when Tua was out. He thought the Dolphins were still going to win this division. Um, and that's reigned true. He came back and has not lost a game that he started and finished. So he's he's been killing it. Um, the one thing I worry about is the next three games for them. At San Francisco, at LA Chargers, at Buffalo. Not Those to mention three. not to mention the Packers who haven't been good, but they upset the Cowboys and then at Patriots the week after. That's five tough games. If they go if they go three and two in those five I'd consider that good. I'd be like, okay, they're actually pretty solid. If they went 4-1, and one, I'd be surprised, but that'd be really impressive. But that's going to be tough to win three of those five. It's not going to be easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. that, that's that's my thinking in a different <laughs> in a different way, I guess, as we often do in this podcast, because the, the Jets are one win away. They're 7-4, and four, which is I – was, I was looking this up, you know, not that, not that it was a hidden secret, but I was like, it's crazy to think we're living in a world where the Jets are 7-4. and four. Like, like you know, they've always been bad, and, and it's crazy that they're actually on a winning record. They're doing well. It's amazing, and so you know, props to them. And the Patriots are not the strongest on paper in this division, but they're two wins back as well. So I'm not saying you know I'm not looking at it uh, like everyone will win every game, but for one, the Dolphins do have the tiebreaker. They get to play the Bills one more time. Um, they are two and one in the division and the bills are zero and two against divisional opponents. So just coming into like the gamble, not a gamble. These teams can control their own fate, but the dolphins, even if they slide a little bit, I feel like they're still going to get 
that top placement it, 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 if mm-hmm. I had to go for it. That's my thinking because these are tough games, but they're not unwinnable. The, 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 the only thing that gets me nervous about the bandwagon you know, falling off is literally Tua if he gets hurt again. Which isn't out of the question, but those guys healthy, they've added some help against the uh, on the defense. The defense is really good, and uh, I could see that putting some problems at some other other teams. Like the Packers are, I'm never going to count out a Packers team with Rodgers and Love. Although Love looked good, um, I feel like that they beat the Bills before. They could beat the Packers. You know, I think they should if the Packers are just playing the spoil later on because I mean four games away they might be if they're mathematically eliminated uh so the next two games will be really interesting the bills one will be a revenge for bills but if they already you know they're already it'll just even it out between the two so that becomes more the record so I'm what still about, going the Dolphins. what about the Jets though they lost to the Jets <clears throat> they did but quarter you know is Mike White gonna stay hot or, or is Wilson gonna go back in I, I like the Jets I hope for them the best wish to them almost the best uh, i mean obviously the eagles i wish the best but um <laughs> the best being super bowl but yeah i'm not i, I it, those are two good i mean they're both going to be the playoffs do we all agree on that dolphins and bills or do we think oh yeah for sure there's gonna they're be both some... gonna make okay okay i think jets will make it as well i think they'll be three Dang. that's possible um, yeah i think i think they'll they'll hold on i mean for me the dolphins the the defense is the worst part, but they did get Bradley Chubb, top sixteen in sacks. He's had a sack and a half in only the two or three games that he's played, so he is helping out a ton. Um, I don't know. I guess my my only worry is the schedule and the experience. If you're comparing schedule, I think the Bills end five and one. They don't have many tough games, but. If you're looking also at experience, the Bills have way more experience at trying to make the playoffs or clinching a bye or any of that sort of thing. The the Dolphins don't. And I, I mean, the only player would be Tyreek. And maybe Tyreek can coach these guys up and keep them focused on the task at hand. But it is yet to be seen where Tua has played, you know, clutch quarterback football. He's playing the best of any quarterback no doubt but when it comes to playoffs or when it comes to making the playoffs kind of like how i i say with hurts we we haven't seen it and at the very least hurts has played a playoff game Tua hasn't even played a playoff game and i haven't really seen him play like a meaningful game since the buffalo bills game where they won but was it really like his doing he didn't do amazing and that was more the defense but it's tough to say i think i would put money more on the bills than the dolphins as of right now um even though there's nothing to be said about them they're playing as well as anyone could play on a five-win streak too yeah but the bills the bills are they're (laughs) the the top afc team in the last two years i mean that's just how and they've been the top offense so it's hard to compare those two teams when the dolphins are so new even though they're very very good they're so new compared to the bills who have been here they've been that top spot before um and held the top spot so i don't know what do you what do you guys think as far as the bills uh, from a alternative perspective anybody worried about them because they're eight and three and people probably thought they would run away with this afc east i mean they're i'm a little bit worried I'm a little bit worried from a long-term standpoint because the secondary hasn't been great, but Tredavious White just came back, and um, their rookie Benford was out, and so they're they're just uh, they need to get healthier in the secondary. But their offense is set; their run run defense is pretty good. It's just really their secondary. We've seen a lot of receivers carve them up recently, so once they get that mm-hmm. figured out i think they'll be good but yeah they're definitely do- going through some pains right now um through the mid midway point of the season well the bills yeah. and the run i mean we we know what jonathan would feel like you know but with as their run game improved you know outside of allen is allen's injury a concern <laughs> uh, i'm not i'm not dogging on them cuz i think they are a great team but they're just they happen to be in one of the most competitive afc uh i mean afc as a whole uh what is it 
not as tight. You know what I mean? Well, there's a lot of competition in that specific division, but I don't know. They haven't played the Patriots yet, and they got them two times coming up. Yeah. And I know I've, I've even said on the podcast, like there's a pre-Brady Belichick and a post-Brady Belichick, but still you've seen, um, I think it's twice now that, that a Patriots led, uh, I mean, a, a Belichick team has, has gotten rid of a Jets quarterback, I think. Uh, yeah. With Darnold before seeing ghosts, if you remember that. And Are so you like, saying Josh Allen's going to get benched? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, but good. if they lose one of those, right? Because we got, what, six games left for these guys, uh, at least for the Dolphins. So you start to watch the other guy. And if yeah. they lose against the Dolphins, they tie against the Dolphins, it is a moral victory to win. When the Dolphins beat the Bills, they were undefeated. The Bills were undefeated, so it's like they they might not have the experience, but they're on a win streak. They're hot, and like maybe it's the hot hand speaking. But I I, I see them as a more well rounded team. The Dolphins with with, but but again, mm. the talent on the Bills is so high with Diggs and and Allen, and I'm not to say it's not with the Dolphins, but I. I it could be some good games coming up, but seeing those existing flaws in the bills get exposed over the last few weeks. Uh, I just don't chalk up the jets teams, uh, the jets game or the Patriots games to easy wins. You know, I think the bills have to have to really like dig deep and win these next couple to control their fate. Is it true that all these teams are in the playoffs? Is that true? I don't know. By which, or is that the, which teams? like, uh, AFC East, or is it the NFC East? That's all the teams. Are no, the, technically, if the if the season ended today, the, they are all see. in playoff spots. That's the NFC East, but the AFC East has three of the teams: the Jets, Dolphins, and Bills are all in it. The NFC East has all four teams. Wow, that's incredible. Wow. Well, let's let's talk about the NFC East with the Cowboys. Let's kind of transition over while Caleb looks that up. Is that confirmed for? Uh... The NFC East, all teams are in the playoffs currently. NFC East, yeah, Washington, Giants, Cowboys, Eagles, yeah. The only team wow. not on the AFC that would be on the bubble, according to NFL.com, is the Patriots. They're, but wow. Jets, Bills, and Dolphins would, if it ended today, would make it. So that, yeah, that's interesting. Well, so the Cowboys, they've been a team – over the last few years that have dominated the regular season year in and year out, and then they get to the playoffs and they lose. And I remember Jonathan saying after that last playoff game that that was it for him. Like, he's not getting hype over regular season. <laughs> and then now, here we are. He does it again. Cowboys fans, he's, they do it again. He's not and here they to get, defend They get himself. hype again. No, I know. I'm, no, I'm just saying, like, facts. No, I'm just saying, like, I'm from what I have observed – like Jonathan and many other Cowboys fans and even non Cowboys fans are saying, Hey, I might I might pick them to win and I might make them to win the NFC and maybe go to the Super Bowl. Like teams are actually picking them because one, the NFC is so bad for one. But for two, the Cowboys have found a superstar, and we've said it before, Tony Pollard. Remember the name Tony Pollard, because he is the, a very versatile running back. And he is taking the load off of Ezekiel Elliott. And Elliott is thriving now in this new role of being this bell cow goal line guy. And he's got six touchdowns in the last five games for Ezekiel Elliott. Tony Pollard is now a top 10 running back in fantasy. I know we don't talk about fantasy too much on this podcast, but to be a top 10 fantasy player, and he's only really played significant time since Ezekiel Elliott's injury, maybe it's six a committee seven role. games ago. Basically, yeah. Yeah, and he's a top 10 back. Incredible. Yeah. You have Mika Parsons, who's second in the NFL in sacks. They have their second in points let up for their defense. They've won four or five, as I said, and their next three games, they got the Colts, Texans, Jags, and then the fourth game, they have the Eagles on New Year's uh, is it New Year's or New Year's Eve. Christmas, uh, Eve. Christmas Eve? Christmas Eve. So pretty easy schedule. They probably win every game up until the Eagles, um, but they're they're hot right now. So with an Eagles fan and a Giants fan, are you? <laughs> this is obviously a stupid question. I didn't think of this. <laughs> are you jumping on the bandwagon of the Cowboys winning the NFC East? <laughs> 
I guess this is only for me. The, really. cow- the Cowboys are the Cowboys won't win the NFC East. Come yeah, on. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> who's who's going to win the NFC East from a Giants fan? Giants. All right, and the, who do you, who's going to win from an Eagles fan? Eagles. <laughs> so I have to pick, and I'm going to say the Commanders. <laughs> <laughs> Please no. <laughs> <laughs> and then Don't I'll speak it. for Jonathan, and Jonathan will say Cowboys. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, we're unbiased here. We give our professional take. <laughs> no, in my in my realistic opinion, okay. yes, the Cowboys are a little bit different than last year with the addition of Tony Pollard, with the emergence of Mika Parsons. They have superstars, and that's what you need to win playoff games because big players make big time plays in big time games. And they haven't had big time players in a long time. And Ezekiel Elliott was their big play guy, and he's just regressed as of uh, the last couple of years. So I'm actually picking. I know I sent a lot of Hurts hate, but I actually am picking the Eagles oh. because the record separation, 10 and 1. I don't really see the Eagles losing anytime soon. Um, I am going to be looking out for the Eagles Giants. Uh, they play in New York and in Philly. I want to see that matchup because I think if if the Eagles are who I think they are, they'll crush the Giants and they should crush them because the the difference crush. between them. I know the record is only three games separation, but they are they should be light years ahead of where the Giants are. So no if they don't struggle, oh my god. If they don't struggle, look, the Giants <laughs> let me down in the last couple of years, so I gotta. The Eagles just I gave up thirty-three them. points to the Packers. The Packers and one. And one. The Packers, dude. That's with Rodgers. You can never. You can look at the chart. No, wasn't was Jordan like, Love threw an no, eighty-yard touchdown? How do you let that happen? That's part of it. That's part of it. Sure, uh, you can see on the chalkboard. So hey, if Aaron Rodgers is in that locker room on that roster, you can't count him out. Jared Goff scored thirty-five points on you guys. And one. We they won though. Thirty five the points. All... Like, like the W is all that matters. Yeah. But thank you. I will say you guys lost to the look, Commanders. This oh. is this <sighs> is just come on. Don't this go is there. Just, that was a. <sighs> we're talking about NFC division, <sighs> NFC East. If the right? Giants so beat the Commanders, if the Giants beat the Commanders this week, then the Giants are better than the Eagles because Eagles lost to the Commanders. <laughs> whatever you, whatever you need. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you need, John. Um, I, I don't say such outlandish things, as Jonathan. It's harder to trap me <laughs> with things like that. I want to keep it on on the Cowboys from okay. a okay. perspective of comparing last season, the year before that. Do you feel any different than last year, or do you think that it's gonna be same old, same old? No, they may same old. Get, they get to the playoffs, but they don't have the players to, to, no, it's to win. Same old shit with the Cowboys. When you think about the Cowboys, you always think of how consistent can they be? And do they have the defense to win? And I think the defense question, I think, is there. Like you said, second least points against. But I think consistency is still an issue. And we see this every season with the Cowboys. For some reason, they wake up some days and beat the Vikings 40-3. to and they wake up other days and lose to the Packers. Like, give up 28. They were leading 28-14 going into the fourth and then lose the game. So I think it's a consistency issue. For them to basically, if I mean, their schedule is pretty good. I mean, I'm not going to lie. They're playing the Colts this week. Then they play Texans, Jaguars, and then Eagles, Titans, Commanders. Those aren't too tough, right? So if we think they're going to win the next six games, what are the chances they can go into the playoffs and let's say they get the first round by even win two three more games after that i don't know i mean for them to go nine and oh until the, for the rest of the season is unlikely with how inconsistent i i, I want to kind of look at the stat but like this season they lost game one and then they won four straight then they lost to the eagles and won two straight and then they lost to the Packers and won two straight. So, like, they can never go a long stretch without losing a game for some reason. So, mm-hmm. I think, honestly, the the offense is going to be a problem without Amari Cooper there. I know CD is good, but I, I don't know. I just don't trust the offense. I think the defense is good, but I don't know if I trust the offense. Is it One thing before I go, Caleb. Uh, no, you're- Dak. Dak Prescott, you know, people have been on and off with him. He hasn't really shined, and, you know, they extended him and everything. But 
is he like a – I don't even know where to put him when I think of top quarterbacks in this league. No, you, you put know? him You put him like close to 10, probably just inside the top 10. But I don't think it's going to be his problem. I don't think it's his fault. I mean, the tight ends have been playing great, but I don't know if C.D. Lamb and – okay, let's say a, a, a defense plays well on C.D. Lamb. Okay, are you going to go to – Gallup really hasn't been used. Like you, you can't really run it with Pollard and Zeke every play. Like I don't know what you're going to do. Well, like that's that's you're you're, you're kind of hitting. I was going to ask you guys what you felt about Dak's like initial interceptions of the game. You know, if that because my take is, I I like Dak as a game manager and he can hit some throws. But you're right. Like, say they they're going to play some good teams and they're uh, inconsistent. Like you said, like it, it is it more of a strike on the Vikings how how beat how great they beat them or that the Vikings just capitulated. You know, like. I don't know, because then against the Eagles, they, they looked really frustrated against that whatever the Eagles were doing to frustrate that defense. So if your strongest elements are the run game, I, and I think this season you're seeing a lot more of that. So it's not a weakness. It's just a fact of the NFL is if you're playing from behind and your run game is the biggest part, it's very hard to take control of the game because running takes a lot of the. It's a lot better to run the, run the ball from the beginning and take a lead and just keep keep running the ball. And they can do that, but if they're playing against better and better teams, um, I, I don't know because again, are they still the most penalized defense? I bring this up uh, off um, to team, I don't know, but I bring that up every time we talk mm. about them because that's been a problem. They lose against the Packers, but that was you know maybe emotional game. And I think the the, the thing with the Cowboys, I think, and I'm saying this as an Eagles fan is a little hypocritical, but there's so much motivation and momentum and hype versus like what's reality. And I know mm-hmm. Eagles fans are very mm-hmm. passionate, so I can't speak a lot on it. But like, when you talk about these big players, Jared, like I get it because I think part of it is is Jerry Jones being the you know top down owner is they like to get those flashy players that sell jerseys and bring views and uh, you know all of that. But not having Amari Cooper is a big part because if if uh, they don't feel confident in Pollard, which is the best best running back on the team, Dak is a good game manager. He can, he can throw. He can clutch he's i think he's not the problem i think he's definitely an upper rank uh quarterback in the league but receiving defense can be beaten you know it's it's this i feel like it's gonna be the same old same old i don't want to uh and same old same old's pretty good if they're making the playoffs and just losing every time but you know they got not to the not to the cowboys fans no yeah well like <laughs> to every other team in the nfl to be that consistently almost good you know, do they have the pieces to get them over that hump and into the Super Bowl? Uh, maybe last year was the better chance. On paper, excuse me. I don't know what you guys think, but like, I, re- it, I remember just... doing. I remember doing a lot of research on the Cowboys last year, and I picked them. I I believe to go to the NFC Championship, and they they were like, oh my god, their red zone efficiency was through the roof. The defense <laughs> was stellar. Right. Every, every like every stat that I could find was was like it made him look amazing yeah but you know i always talk about the chargers when you look at them on paper and you see all these big names bosa and asante samuel derwin james and uh, like we had uh casey hayward for a while and chris harris jr like all these big names and then you go and you see it on the field and it doesn't really produce but with mika parsons um He's legit. I mean, second in sacks. But they had him. They sophomore. had him last year. So yeah, what? What changed from was, last year that, this year? That's my thing. Is what's he's like, better what's than biggest, last year. Though. He's about the same. He's he was just as good last year. And then the the thing on offense, Tony Pollard is now taking the load off from Zeke, like I said before. And Zeke is is not. He doesn't have to rush for a hundred yards anymore. He's now a goal line back. If if anything, if you want anything more. He even is resting, and then when Tony Pollard doesn't play, now he's got fresh legs. And I think as he gets older, that's a a role that he could fill for years and years while Tony Pollard is now this Kamara-type player. Um, They're using using Elliott really well. I'll give the Cowboys that because of – It's like everyone's everyone's found their role. And, you know, we still have to talk about OBJ potentially going to the Cowboys. I think that's a good fit for him because he won't be the wide receiver one. He'll just be 
a kind of third down guy or a guy that the defense kind of forgets about because they're covering CD and Gallup, yeah. and all of a sudden you have Straw eyes a Pro Bowl wide receiver. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So that's also something to, to look forward to if you're a Cowboys fan because I know he visited the Cowboys during Thanksgiving, but now he is visiting the Giants. So he's deciding between those two. I would assume he would go with the, the Cowboys. The Giants, I don't think, would – I'm surprised they would want him, to be honest. Maybe yeah. the Packers. The Packers play on a hybrid turf. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and I hate to say AT&T's, uh, I, I think they play on turf. They play on turf. So, hybrid turf. Amazing safe. point. Yeah. So, maybe, that, if you, you know, longevity. <laughs> we were just talking about off pot that, that uh, OBJ hates MetLife turf and just turf in general. All of his so I don't know why he's been on turf. So that may, maybe that's yeah. a factor when you, when you step on that feels like, no, I can't, I can't risk it again. <laughs> I yeah, don't know. For real. But uh, yeah. Yeah. But then again, you got to talk about the two game difference too, is going to be a big factor. Eagles are just up too. So uh, you're starting to, if you're the Cowboys to win the NFC East, you're starting to have to watch what the Eagles do. And I mean, and, yep. and you know, they don't control their own fate at this point, you know, two games, if the Eagles go, Oh, and two, and they go two and one, two and oh, I mean, maybe, but yeah, like that's, that's a factor too, as to why they're probably looking more. And at they play, the they, they play, right. They play against each other once. Yes. More. Week 16, I believe at Cowboys. So as long as, as long as you guys lose one game and then they beat you, then, You'll be tied, but I don't know what the tiebreaker will be. Probably division, division record. Yeah, division record. Division record. So we'll, yeah. we'll we'd we'd have to see. I think the Eagles. Eagles are two and one. That. Cowboys are three and one, but that could change by the time they meet. Yeah. Because the Eagles have the Giants in Week 14. But yeah, you start to if the Eagles, you know, at some point start to mathematically are in, do you start resting starters or you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know. You never know. I don't know. Depends on the because um, of the Vikings too. I don't know. Forty ers Winning the NFC West. Are you jumping on the bandwagon? They're seven and four in first place. Right behind them, Seahawks at six and five. Cardinals four and eight. Rams three and eight. Irrelevant. Cardinals, Rams, <laughs> swipe them off. It's basically 49ers <laughs> yep. and Seahawks. Wow. So when you look at the 49ers <laughs> as of recently, they've won four four or five. What, Caleb? Well, just... you think you think Cardinals are <laughs> a legit threat? <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just surprised you don't give any like respect to like. I mean, the Rams Super Bowl hangover. I think we can, you know, that you got your ring. <laughs> Cardinals, they're just so inefficient. But you're just gonna swipe them off. You're not gonna. <laughs> they're, they're, they're four two, and eight. They're, they're way too far back. They're three games away. If they just, <laughs> they stink. No, it's yeah. Um, Cliff okay. Kingsbury needs to be fired. Like I said weeks and weeks ago. Uh, but that's that's yeah, another over there. Okay, the 49ers won four out of their last five. They have the lowest points let up, fifteen point seven points per game let up. They acquired Christian McCaffrey, as many of you know, and since that point, they've been four and five. They did lose to the Chiefs his first game there, but he was rarely used. Um, it was the first week, and, I think. Right? Yeah, literally the first week, couple days after yeah. they got traded. Elijah Mitchell is now. Yeah, is he out for the season, John? He's out six to eight weeks. So basically, so for the rest of the regular, regular season, season, he's out. Yeah. So CMC, big role now, yep. huge role, which is a problem. There, if you worry about his health. Yeah. True. History of 49ers running backs well, and CMC and combined. CMC. Yeah. Yeah. I that's want him healthy, but luck. that sucks for the yeah. And then their next three games, um, they're a doozy. They got the Dolphins, they got yeah. the Bucks, and they have at Seattle. Those are some tough, tough mm, games you play. It's not that tough. You play the number <laughs> one team in the AFC. Well, who's East, not tough, John? A Tom Brady, and in Seattle. Nah, that's that's easy. so tough. Who, who's that's easy. easy. All of them or, or okay. The Dolphins one this week is gonna be tough. Okay. The Bucks is going to be easy. Come on for the for the Bucks. The buck, the Bucks just lost to the Browns, bro. Okay, so, in overtime. In okay, overtime. and then the Seahawks. They already beat twenty-seven to seven earlier this season. That's a piece of cake. They're going to shut them down. How early this season? They they didn't show their whole uh, playbook. They were holding back. Week week two. 
Oh, they weren't trying. <laughs> yeah, it's week two doesn't matter, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean Geno Smith in Seattle. I mean that's that's tough game. I think that's, gonna that's be you gotta... bro. I'll literally put five hundred dollars on it right now. That's a money no, line. You don't have easy. to do that. We can just we can just debate. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what about the commanders? Do you think the commanders are, are legit? Or are they going to... Then they play have... the commanders, which is a piece of cake. <laughs> and then they play the raiders, which is... Oh my gosh, that's a walk oh, yeah. in the park. The, then they uh, play the cardinals in week 18. Hang on. The raiders gonna... have won two straight games. <gasps> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, no, I in go with... overtime. I got to go with John. Oh. I think that's going to be... That, that, I'll give you that one. For the, I'm not even a 49ers fan, but I can see g- giving you that one for the Raiders, over the Raiders. <laughs> Dude, Hard bro, this, team, this team's easily going to win this division. It's not even going to be that hard at all. So okay. you're jumping on the bandwagon. Yes, I'm all the way on the bandwagon. I'm front row of the roller coaster. Oh. <laughs> Caleb? I am not. I'm going to stick with my early season. Oh, come on. Yeah. Of the Seahawks. Cause Please, educate me. <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> yeah i'm can on their, we, ha, they're one game behind tell, the 49ers like okay if this was a race they're just behind the bandwagon of the 49ers you know so can you remind everyone what your take was beginning of the season before, before the season a game started, was played that the seahawks would win the division and uh i went with my gut and now i'm gonna go with my heart and i'm gonna say they <laughs> wait no wait wait wait, wait. I, what does your gut say though i, I want to see what your gut says oh they both say the same thing they're they're in you know, oh, you know <laughs> <laughs> no i i like gino i mean losing to the bucks in germany was like i, I think it's ex- it was an experience for the nfl to go to germany too so it's like i'm not saying that doesn't count of course it counts but you give brady a prime time in another country it's just the nfl wanted brady to win you know like they wanted that history yeah, that to be made easy. and <laughs> but what about what about the, the seahawks yeah. what about the seahawks schedule though because they have to play Okay, so you're assuming that they're going to beat the 49ers. Okay, I'd like to after see that, yeah. they after they play the 49ers, they got to go to Kansas City. Oh, that's a, that's a loss. Then they got to play the <laughs> oh, Jets. The Jets yeah. have a better record than them. That's going to be well, a tough game. Right as of right now. By then they they might have a worse record. Right. Okay. True. They also just lost to the Raiders. That was a tough one. That's embarrassing. But, but, that's a little embarrassing. You literally had a bye to prepare for the Raiders, who have two players that they give the ball to, either Jacobs or Adams. So they give the ball to Jacobs 40 times, and you didn't make any adjustments at all. Yeah, I mean, that's ridiculous. And this can't show all your cards right away. I just, I just, I like what the 40... The 49ers so, look, so they took the loss on the, purpose. They're... <laughs> li- <laughs> they're... <laughs> no, all right. Are the 49ers that we talked about this, I think last year too, and it's a little bit parallel to the Cowboys, you know, like they've, they, Jimmy G is a great quarterback managing the game, but I feel like the Seattle Seahawks are their highs and lows are they're much more inconsistent, but this can benefit Seattle in a, t- against tough teams like the 49ers. Like the Cowboys have a history of just always being that way, right? Seahawks. I think they can use that momentum of Geno kind of leading the team, being that. Whereas the 49ers, hey, is it not? Is it not still kind of awkward that Jimmy G might be a question mark after the season? Do you think? I mean, he's making money every win, you know, playing every game. But you know what I mean? Like that. And then if CMC gets injured, that changes a lot of things. Kittle's good, but they use him a lot for blocking, and so that impacts a lot if they lose the run. So I, I feel like the 49ers, you know what you're going to get. And Seattle can surprise, which towards the end of the season, I'd like to. I think they're going to surprise a little bit. I, I could be wrong, but I got to. I got to stick with what I said at the beginning. You know, I, I I'm, I'm going to go with the Seahawks. Jared, I respect it. I really do respect it. <clears throat> I I don't really know what to think. I I think I'm going to stick with my original pick uh, in the beginning of the season and say 49ers. Um, granted, I had no clue they were going to get Christian McCaffrey and be that good. Yeah, that um, helps. <laughs> but look, the there's still six games. You know, there's injuries. Yeah, and there's upsets that happen. And and you're right, Jimmy G isn't the best. You know, if if the game's on the line, I don't know if I trust Jimmy G. 
Gino is just playing straight out of his mind, and he doesn't really have anything to lose. Jimmy G's working towards a new contract. Jimmy G has nothing Gino, to lose. That's that's an interesting fact. He's working towards a new contract. He's out, he's on his last year of his contract, so he, he literally he's... knows he, nobody wants him. He literally is just playing to play and have fun. Well, it, have you guys seen on on like some NFL like uh, social media circles trends? Like people have been saying that if you like blind looked at uh, without knowing who the player was at this quarterback stats of his win loss, his touchdown to interception, Jimmy G would be like a Hall of Fame contender. But because we know it's Jimmy G, there's like a bias as to like. <laughs> how good he is i i, I was i'm not, not saying that's how i believe but i saw that a couple times throughout the past week and it's i don't know like it's not flashy yeah like right gino like gino makes these oh he had some beautiful great throws great throws but jimmy just can like too. amazing throws but you know what you're gonna jimmy get out of jimmy can but he doesn't celebrate and then i don't notice it <laughs> and it's not on espn because he didn't celebrate so you know, he text back his teammates you, or something you want him to celebrate <laughs> yeah. like heineke celebrates uh <laughs> don't, don't 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 say <laughs> a screen pass so Heineke angry, celebrates so uh, 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 sportsman like conduct <laughs> <laughs> all right let's move off of that all right so we'll move on to our last team and that is the minnesota vikings arguably one of the hottest and most surprising teams in the nfc and in the whole nfl nine and two um 9-2 record. They are leading the NFC North. The standings go as follows. The Vikings at 9-2. and two. Guys, you won't believe it, but the Lions in second place at 4-7. and seven. Packers at 4-8 and eight, and Bears 3-9. and nine. So the question is not only that they win the division. I think that's already a given, but can the Vikings and will you guys jump on the bandwagon for the Vikings getting a number one seed in the playoffs, meaning that they would have to overtake the now number one seed, Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> Caleb went mute. <laughs> no. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not touching that bandwagon. <laughs> now, okay. I want to I wanna break down yeah, stats. We 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 know Vikings are good. They've won four of their last five. They beat the Dolphins without Tua. They beat the Bills. Uh, Kirk Cousins won a primetime game <gasps> on Thanksgiving <gasps> against yeah. the Patriots. Wow. It happened. Kirk Thuggins he did. won. <laughs> wow, primetime game. I'm happy for him. as a, as a man. I'm happy for him. So. You won't be happy when he takes the division oh. and it takes the uh, oh. number one seat from you. Because uh, let's let's take a gander in at that. Maybe at the... <laughs> uh, and the Vikings get the number one seed, <laughs> and then you you turn off the console. <laughs> um, let's look at the remaining schedule because the Eagles have the Titans at Giants at Bears at Cowboys for their next four, and then they have the Saints and Giants at home. The Vikings have Jets at Lions, Colts, Giants at Packers, and at Bears. So just by looking at that, I would say the Eagles have the tougher schedule because they have to go at Bears, at Cowboys, at Giants. I know the Bears doesn't sound bad, but you got to think December 18th in Chicago. going to be a little cold. They're coming off of playing in MetLife. December 10th yeah, but the, or 11th. But the Vikings whatever. have to play in Chicago on January 8th. Yeah, it's going to be your. Uh, and when, but they're, they're all. It probably won't even matter. They probably already had it. They're they already, already got the division on. Oh. They probably got the number got one the on the number lock. one seat oh, by far. Oh, oh, okay. Goodness. Mm -hmm. Goodness. No, the, okay. There's a lot to dissect there, but in weather wise, I don't think the Vikings or the or the Eagles will have trouble but, with the weather. And it also, gets cold in, in the link and in, in, in there. We've been to MetLife well, in the to winter. Remind, it sucks. <laughs> it's it you painful. you guys are nine and one you guys are ten nine and one. one to nine and two ten and one to nine and two yep. so what would i think what would have to happen is the vikings would have to beat you guys right no 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 wait they don't play each other again so you're starting to watch you guys you you guys won so you guys win the tie you have the tie so the vikings yeah. would have to would have to have a better record than you meaning you guys would have to lose 
A lot of games. Have, no, yeah, just at least, two. at least one. At least one two. They, they need, the Vikings need the Eagles to have a worse record than them. If right. it's a tie, the Eagles have the tiebreaker because the Eagles beat them. Yeah, in there's week no two. way the Vikings are going to win, win, have the number one seed. It's not possible. So, so Jared, I mean, you're it's on the, possible. I'm not Dude, on the they line. literally not... who who are the other two teams that are in in competition for the number one seed? It's Eagles and Cowboys, and they got shellacked by both of them. So if they they say, would have to have the best record in the NFC, which they're not going to have. If they're at all tied with the Eagles or Cowboys, they won't get it. What's the toughest game when you look at the remaining schedule? At Packers, Eagles, oh, for Eagles? What? For the Eagles? Eagles. Titans, Oh, at Giants, Eagles, at that's Bears, easy. At Cowboys. At Cowboys is toughest. Easy. Cowboys, Titans I think will be a tough one. Giants, too. No, the only tough one is Cowboys. All the others, they'll win. <laughs> See, and those are tough because you you got to play at MetLife and Chicago. Dude, you're NFC gonna be East games? You're going to be banged up. Nah. We know this, John. Anything could happen amongst the NFC East. You guys, I mean, but I, I, they're going to be tough games, I think. The Vikings, I don't think they have an easy schedule either. I mean, week 18, Bears is going to be cold, but the Bears might. I, I think the players, we've talked about this, the players and, and fields are wanting to win. I think the front office has clearly just given up. They've gutted the defense, and I think they want to tank for, for picks. So I don't think that, I think that's the only game I'll give to the Vikings as a as a win if it matters for them at that point. The Colts. That's is, it? The Colts might be a weaker one too, but again, wait, if, you're saying they're gonna go what one and six? No, <laughs> I'm saying five? they're. I'm saying you're gonna be close. It's gonna be tough because oh, uh, oh, the only well, one you can confidently pick. Yeah, and and, and, and even then it's the Lions? NFL. But well, you think no, at Lions them? isn't a cakewalk. Yeah, because they're such they're such high scoring teams, yeah. you know, and like well, well, John, you kind of alluded to it. They were beat by the Eagles and the Cowboys, but not only were they beat, um, they lost by a combined fifty four points, yeah. and. It's it's weird, uh, and I'm sure like some you can break down the game design as to why. But for the Vikings to be pretty much blown out by the Cowboys, and then in week two we were wondering if it was the Eagles' schedule or whatever. But like, were the Eagles legit? Were the Vikings legit? I think the Vikings have proven with nine and two record they're legit. But they were you know knocked off their feet with the Eagles in week two. So they're mm-hmm. whatever weaknesses that those teams are very specifically suited to to. Uh, just to defeat the Vikings have been utilized, so like they can be exposed. So, I think they're they're probably going to win their division. What they're up five games or something, you know. But if the Lions beat them, it, they're, they're, no one's mathematically eliminated yet. So, I, I I I can't jump on the. I mean, I'm an Eagles fan too, so I'm biased. But I can't jump on the wagon. I will say, if I'm a Vikings fan, I have more hope for this year than any of the last few years because of Kirk Thuggins, as you say. I like that his QB stats have have gotten worse <laughs> but the wins have gone up which is a real statistical <laughs> thing that's happened this season because we talk about this this number sometimes lie like he's taking riskier throws he's, he's balling out more it means taking you know deeper shots and you know good for so I'm, as a vikings fan i'm hopeful will i will i get the number one seed i don't think so but the eagles control their fate so you know in, in injuries can happen game upsets happen but uh just looking at it i think although the vikings do have the easier next few games um, I'm, I'm thinking the Eagles are going to walk away with it. When you look at the Vikings, yeah. not only have they got blown out against the Eagles and against the Cowboys, but, I mean, if I'm being honest, they should have lost to the Bills. I mean, they, they got lucky. To who? I know it was to, you cut out the who? Bills. Oh, yeah. The, the Bills. No, they played well that game. You got to give them hey, credit for that. A win, a win yeah, I... <sighs> A win's yeah, a win. but if yeah. Allen doesn't, they didn't do anything. If Allen didn't fumble it, it was it would have been over. No, That's they, weird for them. no, I yeah. think they forced that. I mean, I think they played well that game. I would give them that. That's a win. I'd give it to them knowing Kirk's history in prime time. You know, we always talk but about that. As soon as the playoffs come nine, around, to keep... nine. I feel like nine times out of ten, Bills win that one. Yeah, so, maybe. maybe. And like I said before, I I picked the the Vikings to win the division, but I've said. You know they're not on the Bills level. You know they're definitely not on the Eagles level. Apparently, according to this, and they're not even on the Cowboys <laughs> level. So, it even though you know they're top of the division in the NFC North, the NFC North is not very good. So, yeah, I, yeah. enjoy it, Vikings fans. Enjoy it while it lasts. Because I think come playoff time, you're gonna hit a wall. Um, so you you don't think they're gonna get the number one seed? 
I'm no, I'm not okay. jumping on the wagon. Because in truth, they're, play, yeah. they're playing great, but yeah, I think they'll make. I mean, they'll probably make the playoffs. But come week 16, when the Eagles play the Cowboys, they might be watching that game, not for the number one seed, but to see if the Cowboys win in for the effects of their mm-hmm. standing for number two. Maybe. Mm-hmm. And again, anything can happen. I mean, you, you, we talk about injuries. We hope players stay healthy, want to beat the best team, against the best team. But, you know, who knows, right? Um, just looking 100%. on paper. So, yeah, well, uh, yeah, on paper, I, I think the Vikings burn bright but but brief. <laughs> and, I don't and know. And they win, they win their division, so they get a home game. That, we got to remember true. people, they have to go into Minnesota to, to, to beat them. So, yeah. Um, as we end our uh, topics here, we're going to move into our predictions for those two games that I mentioned beforehand. We have the Miami Dolphins at San Francisco 49ers, two teams that we just talked about. The Dolphins, we said we're not jumping on the wagon except for Caleb. You said you were. And uh, the 49ers, a team that everyone jumped on the wagon except for Caleb. <laughs> Caleb is sticking with the Seahawks. So now they, the two teams meet. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I'm going to go – I still don't know. I mean, up okay. until this point, I still don't know. This is such a tough game. And, John, you mentioned something to me last week – or not even last week. It was last night. Uh, I don't know if you want to share it about this game, but what do you think about this game? I think it could potentially be a Super Bowl preview. I don't know. Really? What are, what are, your, what are your thoughts on that? Caleb doesn't like it. I, I don't see that at all. First, <laughs> I mean, I know I'm an Eagles fan, but I don't. Oh, you never know. Oh yeah, you never know. I'm not, and I don't want to be the the. If I've come off of it, I apologize to the cocky Eagles fan, but more trying to speak from the commentary position. I don't. As much as I like the Dolphins, I don't know if they have like you said the youngness of the team might prevent it's like with the bengals like the bengals made it but, but they the were bengals a young did team. it last year like yeah anybody, like them, they might eh. maybe young is good these days yeah maybe well uh do you do you believe in 49ers that much though to make it all the I way re- there? i really do i mean uh, not really? to not to be mean but i don't think the nfc is that good like i don't think the yeah. eagles are that good i think they're good but they're not that good <laughs> it's weird because what's the difference of that <laughs> Uh, let me quantify because the record the record because <laughs> the records are better in the nfc but then does that mean the teams they've played have been worse or or the afc has played uh, you know what i mean you who knows at this point we can't quantify yeah. anything this season the jets are a good team this year and the patriots aren't we don't know what's going to happen the <laughs> Another right. yeah. So I okay. Let's let's go okay, into so horror. Let's, picks, let's make this pick. <laughs> we here. We could talk forever. I've uh, stalled long enough. <laughs> I'm going with okay. The San Francisco 49ers. I think the difference maker will be that defense. It's it's about time, and it and two was due for a bad game, and he's due for a loss. The stat can't go on forever, where he is. Undefeated in games that he started and finished, so <laughs> it must end to the best defense in the NFL, and that is the 49ers. Yeah, I, I agree. I think 49ers at home are going to win this game. I would be surprised if they lost, but I think it's going to be a great game, and I, I'm excited to see Waddle and Tyreek against this defense because when we think about the 49ers, what do we think? We think best run defense in the league. So, I mean, the, the mm-hmm. Dolphins like to throw the ball a lot. Like, even against the best or the worst rush defense in the league last week, the Texans, the Dolphins really didn't run the ball that much. They just kept throwing the ball 30 points in the first half. So this is going to be a super fun good, super fun game to watch, but I do think that the 49ers will come away with it. I think it's going to be pretty high scoring. I think both teams will get in the 20s, um, but I think the difference will be McCaffrey. Yeah, I I... I have to stay consistent, and I still will go with the Dolphins for this game just to still be the contrarian, still stay in line with everything I've said. <laughs> but for what you pointed out, it is like when I think of the 49ers defense, they are statistic- statistically that good. But the Dolphins game, for better or worse, is their is their receivers, you know, and the run and the quarterbacks really. So like they even against the Texans haven't deviated from who they are, which is always a key to, you know, you always want to play your game, not your opponents. So you're going, you're not the Dolphins. Are they really going to challenge the best part of the 49ers in the run defense? Like maybe a little bit, but are they going to more challenge the, the secondary? 
and will they win if you got Waddle and Hill? And adding to it the Tua's movement in the pocket and scrambling abilities, going it messes up a lot of defensive schemes. So if they can exploit that a little bit and still pass the ball and still get a little bit of run game just with that, I think, like you said, I think it'll lead to a high-scoring game because although the Dolphins have made moves to win now and try to strengthen their defense, uh, 49ers do have CMC. Losing Mitchell is going to hurt a lot. You know, obviously you wish them the best, and I think they'll they're looking at good prospects of making the playoffs, but that's going to impact the way the game flows, substitutions go, how much CMC wears. And again, we talk about Jimmy G. Like he can make those throws, be the game manager, and you know, take taking a team to the Super Bowl. Been there, so I think it could be a high scoring game because I think he'll meet the challenge. But if it comes down to it, we've seen the Dolphins come up big against a team like the Bills, so it's not out of the question for them to do do it against the 49ers, who maybe like the Bills on paper are a better team overall. So I'm still gonna go with the Dolphins for this one, but I'm excited for this game. I respect you sticking in line with your thoughts the whole podcast. The <laughs> I try. Dolphins. I try. Yeah, it was, that's good. Uh, the next one, Kansas City Chiefs at Cincinnati Bengals. A AFC Championship rematch, um, but unfortunately, it'll be a different outcome, and I'm picking the Kansas Ooh, City Chiefs okay. with Patrick Mahomes. Interesting. Okay. I, I love this – this new offense especially since i have kelsey it's like get <laughs> kelsey a touchdown per game i love it sky Moore, he's someone to watch out for i think he's filling the role how they people thought Kadarius tony was gonna fill a role like that sky Moore's doing very well and pistachio isaiah pistachio remember the name he is a star he's one of the hardest runners i've ever seen i mean he he hits the ground with force unlike anything i've ever seen before and for him and for clyde or not clyde for him him. and mckinnon i love the backfield right now it's very speedy it's very shifty it's not that typical slow big derrick henry plow you over it's going to be like you can't even see us you got sky more this way you got pistachio that way and McKinnon's running around, and then Mahomes is running around. And then you got you got to worry about Kelsey. You can't double Kelsey anymore. So, Kansas City Chiefs, uh, the Bengals just do not have enough personnel on the defensive end to keep up with any of them. Not even one Chiefs player. Not even Scandley or <laughs> Beck, that tight end. Um, have you have you seen Pistachio when he runs the ball and he once he gets tackled, like what he does? No. You have to look it up because he literally. He'll get tackled, and he's like he's like the guy that once you bring him to the ground, he'll his knee will touch the ground, and he'll immediately try to get up off the ground as fast as he can. He like <laughs> rip people off and like try to stand up and run away as fast as he can. And pe- players like hold you down, and he's like throwing you off trying to like jump up. <laughs> it's it's the funniest thing to watch. Just like wa- look up yeah. Isaiah Pacheco highlights <laughs> from this past weekend. Like literally, he he will go crazy to get. <laughs> It's so funny. Just, just him getting up from plays compilation. Yeah. That just reminds me of Madden when players like are programmed to get up that they'll lift a guy on their shoulders and they like do a somersault. That's like, literally what yeah. he does. You know what I mean? Like he's just programmed. I gotta get up. You know, my code is telling me. Right. So, so wait. So you pick the who, Chiefs. <laughs> who are you gonna pick? Um, I, I was, I was, I'm thankful that you you elaborated, Jared, because I'm, I'm, I'm undecisive. I, I, I could see this going either way. Uh, I'm going to go with the Chiefs because they're just they're. Uh, it's easy because they have the hot hand, and it, and it's Andy Reid, Mahomes, Kelsey. Like I saw the headlines about Kelsey. Is he the best tight end ever? Um, I th- I mean I, I, I'm not no. I'm not making a point on what that is, but it's more <laughs> just how hyped up they are. You know, like I don't even think that's a question you should be asking till. Like he's still young, you know. Like he says, a lot it's of years. It's Antonio Gates. It's Antonio Gates for anyone who wants to know. I think it's just kind of the headline that someone <laughs> thought of. And it's like, oh, this will get clicks. You know, I'm not saying he is or isn't. I'm just saying like that's just coming off a great game. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they've been playing super well, but I like the Bengals a lot because they've improved on a lot of the weaknesses. And I couldn't even tell you specifically how in the game plan. But we talked about in the beginning of the season they were losing close games. Was it a reflection on them or not? Part of it, part of it isn't, because they were really close. 
now they're winning those close games, and I think they've improved a lot of the weaknesses that were being exposed very early on. So if they're if you're a team in the NFL, you'd rather maybe unlike the Cardinals, you'd rather start off bad or shaky and then kind of find your identity as the season goes on versus starting out the game hot, starting out the season hot, and then kind of falling mm. off, which is I think a bit yeah. of the allegedly Kingsbury's issue. Um, so I like the Bengals have kind of form their identity again and they, they're they, i mean they don't have super bowl hangover the way the rams do but they're you know they have unfinished business so i could see them upsetting the chiefs because again as much as we talk about the chiefs and the hype and how good that overall team is uh i part of me i am still going to pick them but i'm aware of my own bias and like that momentum of like they've just been playing really well you want to the hot hand fallacy it's going to continue so i could see the bengals playing the spoil but i still think those that, like you were saying, Jared, just like, like all the well-roundedness of the Chiefs is going to be a lot to pierce the weakness of the Bengals. But I think it's going to be a fun game. I wouldn't be mad if the Bengals won either. So <laughs> I'm just going to have to go with the Chiefs okay. just to make a definitive statement. Well, you guys are making it too easy again because I can't believe you guys aren't seeing that there's no way that the Chiefs win this. The Bengals what? are going to win this game. And honestly, it might no be way. it might be a, a little bit embarrassing. Actually, it might no. be high scoring. I mean, Jamar Chase is coming back. Joe Mixon is coming back. Joe Burrow is just l- putting it in perfect spots for T. Higgins right now. I just th- I think the Bengals are going to win this game at home. I think the Bengals are going to double Kelsey, and then you got really nowhere to go. I mean, if they beat Kansas City in Kansas City in the AFC Championship game with Tyreek Hill and you're going to tell me that they're going to be able to beat the Bengals now in in Cincinnati without Tyreek that's just not going to happen. The Bengals are going to win this game. It's going to be too much. The the Chiefs defense is not prepared to cover Higgins and Chase right now. They're just not. Well, they still have what? Jones. No way. Well, the Chiefs that's what that's an interesting thought though cuz you bring up some good points. T Higgins have been the guy, but do they do, uh was it Chris Jones on the Chiefs yeah. like what Burrow's been do? getting hit a lot still. And if he's on the if he's healthy, I think he is. That's gonna be a problem for, for Burrow. That's that's you know what I mean. Like I think that's the one thing that you can only patch up so much. You still have seen Burrow take some hits, so can't have that. But as much as they've improved, I do wonder if that's gonna be an interesting caveat. I don't. But yeah, you, you bring up a good like again. I, I could see the Bengals winning for those reasons. I. I yeah, uh, Jared, what are your thoughts? <laughs> do you agree? You, are you are you shifted at all by John's? assessment i know i'm a i'm a big Bengals fan i really am um <laughs> so are you cha- no chance no there's a lot of chance. Say chance no chance there's a chance but I mean, it's slim hmm. how but it's the chiefs and patrick mahomes so it's it's got to be more than that like that Bengals I, defense is so bad. i would take it's so bad i would take you know it no it's not what in what you game in what game all of them. <laughs> Bro, what? The Chiefs They're defense is trash. Chiefs defense gave up 27 points to the Chargers. That's good. <laughs> Chiefs have good offense. Or Chargers have a good offense. <laughs> it's okay. Here's my thing. My one thing that I would leave you with is why hasn't any other team doubled Kelsey? Like, it's just not that because easy. Because they're dumbasses. And he's going to be. I'm sorry, but they're just <laughs> stupid. If I was a defensive coordinator, you have to put two on Kelsey. Make Valdez Scantling beat my guy one on one. Make Juju beat my guy one on one. Make Sky Moore beat my guy one on one. It's not going to happen consistently. If Valdez Scantling and Juju and Sky Moore go 80 yards each, then congrats to you. You deserve hey, Juju, to win. Juju did have two touchdowns that one game. Which one? So he's done it Which before. Game? Let's see if he could do it again. It was Which um one? yeah. Yeah, it wasn't too long ago. Why are we? Why yeah, am I blanking on this? He didn't have two touchdowns. Yeah, it was. He had one. Oh, okay. He did have one. At some okay. point. That's. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the shade. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? <laughs> We're not even that. Like, I'm not even that against the Bengals. I just. Why are you hating on my pick? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's just our instinct. I just to have debate. never seen you pick the Chiefs unless it's. Did, like, yeah. I think the only time you did pick was last year in the playoffs, and then they lost. <laughs> so, so I'm always, I'm always right about them, though. 
Yeah, I mean, I will no, say... No, you're yeah. always wrong about it. It's going to be a rematch, and it's amazing. I mean, I remember being amazed at the Bengals winning against the Chiefs when it was they lost the coin toss, right? Like, and they still yeah. won. The against reason Mahomes. the reason I, I'm not picking the Chiefs is because I don't think it's that hard to beat them. Like, it's not that hard to slow their offense down. Put two guys on Kelsey. I mean... <laughs> Please, somebody. Save for the people in the back, huh? <laughs> it's like, so simple. Please, it's not that hard. Yeah, I, I don't. Think... I'm sure it's, well... it, someone could explain it more. <laughs> I don't think it's that simple. <laughs> <laughs> no, it can't, be that, it can't be that easy. But yeah, no, um, no, no, but still, it, come on. I think they no, but I think what the heart of what we're getting at because we could talk about you know man coverage, cover coverages and stuff. That's you know we we, we know these things, but more. I think what we're trying to say is they match up very well and they can kind of exploit each other if they choose to. And they've, they've matched up well in the past. So I don't know. The, I think I, I, I'll tell you, it's going to be close. Yeah, it's going to be excited. a great game. I'm not, I'm not saying Chiefs are blowing no. them out. I don't think Bengals are blowing them out. But it, they're going to be two. Both of these games are going to be so great to watch. And I, I'm hoping it's high scoring, very exciting. Are any of them prime time? No, chance? both of them are at four. What the heck's the primetime game then? Uh, it's Colts Raiders Cowboys. They really want Rams. They really want Matt Ryan to throw more picks and sack fumbles on primetime. <laughs> I just had to watch him. So they should really. Of the prime time they should have flexed. They really should have Chiefs Bengals primetime. I mean, come on, dude. They should flex like the Westminster Dog Show over the Colts <laughs> games. WNBA. I can't stand it. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, no, we're, I not, love... we're not. We're not okay. We're not gonna. I love Phoenix Mercury. I love yeah. him. But anyway, yeah, um, so though. this that's that's the end of our podcast. Uh, wow, we covered college football to WNBA yeah. to Westminster Dog <laughs> Show. That's, that's great. <laughs> we hit it all here. We're so efficient. We hit it all. Wow. <laughs> I think we should become a all around sports yeah, podcast. <laughs> Next podcast will be eight hours long. A FIFA commentary <laughs> at World Cup. <laughs> oh yeah, we'll talk about the World Cup. Yeah, all right. Hey, United all States, right. we can all get. That's a, you know, there shouldn't be any, <laughs> there shouldn't be any any conflict there, right? I don't think. Yeah, no, no, I don't think so. I don't think Ghana's in it. Um, is it? Ghana yeah. is in it. It is in it. Yeah, I, yeah. I think they lost. Well, though. in the in the round of sixteen, now that we're at that point. Yeah. Um. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to this transition. YouTube channel. Uh, next week, we will have a bit of a surprise. We haven't told anyone what we're doing uh, next week. I, I believe we will have a form of a podcast Tuesday. It'll probably be very short. Like, Stay tuned. Just kind of, yeah, just kind of previewing what we're going to do the next week. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for that. Uh, make sure you're following over on TikTok and on Instagram at Dorn Podcasts. Podcast. You can get all our updates. And uh, make sure that you follow our chalkboard. The link will be in our description. And that's where you can talk about um, talk with us about the live games that are going on. You know, Monday, Thursday, Sunday, uh, we're in there chatting about what is happening live during the game. So be sure to follow us over there. And thank you guys so much for watching again. And as always, we will see you guys next week week.